All right, in this video, we're gonna to try to use some simple household supplies to make deuterium depleted water. I'm not selling anything. I've just noticed that if you wanna go on a low deuterium diet, the water is really expensive and the magic machines that may or may not work are really, really expensive too. So here's the basic science behind it. So hydrogen has one proton and one electron and water is made out of two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. So deuterium looks like hydrogen which has a proton and an electron, but a neutron will get in here and hook up here, and then that becomes deuterium. So, so deuterium is the same as hydrogen, and it acts like water, and it lives in your water, but it's got this neutron in there that makes it twice as heavy and changes some of the other properties. And then when you drink it, your body can't process it the same way it would process water. So that's the science behind wanting to get the deuterium out of your water. And then deuterium or heavy water is D2O rather than H2O. So this extra neutron makes it heavier. That's why they call it heavy water when, when a water is high in deuterium or all deuterium. The freezing point is also warmer. So it freezes a few degrees warmer than your regular water molecule would. And so that's the key. We want to get it to freeze and remove the deuterium that way. Now in most water, you're talking about 155 parts per million. So if there's a million parts of H2O, there's 155 parts of deuterium. So depleted deuterium water supposedly is better for you, your body will function more efficiently, and there's even people who say that it can reverse or prevent cancer and all kinds of other magic things. I don't know if that's true, but I figure if we can get it out of the water by doing something simple in the freezer, let's go for it. Now, they've tested naturally in the mountains. They go up to the mountains and they test the water coming from the stream in the mountains, and the water in the stream when the snow is melting has lower deuterium levels than your average water, so less than 155 parts per million, leading me to believe that something in the freezing cycle can remove deuterium from your water. It also is consistent with the fact that the, the freezing temperature is higher, so it'll freeze at a higher temperature than regular water. Now it's best if you start out with some clean water, so you can either buy some distilled water that's bottled, you can make your own distilled water, or we've got reverse osmosis filter that I use for my water in my house, so that's what we're gonna start with. So the water goes in the freezer and you let it freeze for a couple hours so that it's frozen around the edges but still liquid in the middle. The idea being that the deuterium has the lower freezing point so it's gonna freeze whereas the water, pure water, isn't going to freeze. Then you punch a little hole in it and put it into a glass jar. So everything that stays frozen inside your bucket contains the deuterium and you're just gonna end up with mostly pure water when you dump it into the jar. Now, some of my research indicates that people think you should expose it to ultraviolet light. So either put it under an ultraviolet light bulb or put it outside after you shake it up. I'm not exactly sure why they tell you to do this, but people say you should do that after your first pass. And then after 30 minutes in the sun, put it back in the freezer, freeze it again to remove more of the deuterium. Uh, it gets less and less effective as you do more and more passes through the freezer. So you want to do it at least two times. You can do three or four if you're really paranoid. And then you should have pretty clean water there at the end. And then all of your troubles will be solved. Your cancer will go away and everything will be perfect. Throw that deuterium away. Bad water. Bad. 